Hey, thanks for clicking on my video. If this video helps you, please consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel. It is greatly appreciated and it really helps. Let's get to the video. Hello everyone, in this video we're gonna talk about signs of trig functions in the different quadrants. So I did a previous video on how to find the different trig functions given a sign value and also given the fact that the um, theta angle was in quadrant three. And so in quadrant three, the signs of the function values are a certain way. And that I got to thinking and I said, well, hey, what about quadrants one, two, and four? So let's make a video and just talk about all four quadrants and what the signs of each function should be in each of those four quadrants. So we're gonna start off, and if you look at the, the center of the screen, we have in, in white our circle. Um, so we could call it our unit circle if we will. Um, the radius is not gonna be one in this case because I'm gonna give us a Pythagorean triple to work with. Um, but if we notice here in quadrant one, we have a yellow triangle. So here we're focusing on quadrant one. Now the six trig functions I'm talking about, we got sine, cosine, and tangent, and also their inverses, cosecant, secant, and cotangent. So let's say that we have a three, four, five Pythagorean triple. So what I mean by that is, let's say we had a distance here of, four, of three along the x-axis, four on the y-axis, and our hypotenuse or the radius here would be five. So if we look at this triangle, in quadrant one, let's think about the actual values of three and four. So three, we're moving to the right from our origin, so three should be positive, and four, we're moving up from the y axis or from the x axis, so four should be positive. So if I think about the function values, so let's talk about sine. So for sine of theta there in quadrant one, that would be like opposite over hypotenuse, so four over five, so that's gonna be a positive value, right? Then we think about cosine, three over five, adjacent, also positive. Tangent would also be positive because that would be opposite over adjacent, four over three. And so now all, all three of those are positive. Well, the inverse would also be positive, right? So cosecant is positive, secant is positive, and cotangent is positive. So if we notice here in quadrant one, all of our functions are positive. So I put an A there, that means all the functions are positive. I'm gonna put a letter in each of the quadrants that tells you which function and its inverse would be positive, and then the rest would be negative, and that'll give us kind of an acronym that we can remember to know the signs of each function value. So let's move across to quadrant two. Let's use those same values, three, four, and five. So I'll put three here, four here, and five here. But now let's think about the signs of those values. For three, we moved left, so this should actually be a negative three, right? Four is still moving up, so four is still positive. And what we're gonna notice here, our hypotenuse or our value for r is gonna be positive each time. So now we can think about our function values. So let's just start with sine again, opposite over hypotenuse. So from theta, now we're looking in quadrant two, this is like our green angle here, um, and so our, green, our green triangle. So opposite over hypotenuse would be four over five, which sine would be positive, okay? So now we've got cosine adjacent over hypotenuse. So this would be negative three over five, so cosine would be negative in this case. Tangent opposite over adjacent, that's going to include our negative three, so tangent should be negative. Now the inverses of these should also have the same sign. So if sine is positive, cosecant would be positive. If cosine is negative, secant is negative, and if tangent is negative, cotangent is negative. So notice here that we've got sine as the only function value that would be positive, and it's inverse cosecant. But So we'll just write an S for quadrant two. So let's move down to quadrant three, and let's use the same values. So we still have our negative three there for x, but then if we put a four here and a five here. Now, now this, this four now should be negative four, right? Because we are now moving down, um, so our y value should be negative. So now let's start with sine. Well, if we go opposite over hypotenuse, that would be negative four over five, so now sine is negative. Cosine, we've got adjacent over hypotenuse, so negative three over five, so cosine is still negative. But now notice tangent, opposite over adjacent, negative over a negative, tangent's actually gonna be a positive here. So once again, secant and cosecant will be negative because sine and cosine are negative, but cotangent in this case will be positive because tangent was positive. So we could put a T in this quadrant because tangent and cotangent are positive. And lastly, let's look in quadrant four. So we have our three there, let's put our four here and our five here. Once again, this four should be negative because we're, down, we're going down from the x-axis. So now let's look at our function values. So sine would be opposite over hypotenuse, so negative four over five, so sine is gonna be negative. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so in this case we have a three over a five, so cosine is actually positive in this case, in this quadrant. Tangent, we have opposite over adjacent, so that's gonna be a negative over a positive, so tangent is negative. 
And now the inverses will have the same sign. So if sine is negative, cosecant is negative. Cosine is positive, secant is positive. And if tangent is negative, cotangent is negative. So in this case, we have cosine as being our only positive function value here. So there is an acronym that you could um, try and remember that is called CAST. Okay. Um, the only thing about this acronym is it doesn't start in quadrant one, um, it starts in quadrant four. So we have CAST, C-A-S-T. So that tells you the function values or the function, the trig functions that would be positive in each of the quadrants starting in quadrant number four. So four, one, two, three, um, you could remember CAST. So now on the video that I did previously, there was an interval that told us where theta was located. And so if you notice, I have put radians on my x and y axis here. So here we had zero radians, pi over two, pi, three pi over two, and then two pi. Okay, so now let's talk about what the interval would look like to, for you to know which quadrant your angle should be located in. So if you get that theta is between zero and pi over two, then you're gonna be talking about quadrant one, right? Because that's between zero and pi over two. If you get that theta is between pi over two and pi, well, now we're in quadrant two. If they tell you that theta is between pi and three pi over two, well, now you are in quadrant three. And if you get that theta is between three pi over two and two pi, then now you are in quadrant number four, okay? So hopefully this video gives you a good idea of what the, fun what the signs of the function values for trig for the trig functions are, um, and so that you can know no matter where your angle theta is located, no matter which quadrant it's in, you should be confident in knowing what the sign of each function should be. All right, so that's how you can know the signs of the different trigonometric functions in each of the quadrants.